Hey, that sort of tickled. Ladies, gentlemen, and her autumn of all ages, it's bonking time. With the abattoir of Zero just around the corner, it's time, of course, to talk about the best builds for each class, or at least the ones best suited for this uniquely difficult new Ultra Endgame activity, which will reward those with exceptional defense and also exceptional offense. With that said, today we are, of course, talking about Barbarian, and the answer to this question is quite simply and clearly Hammer of the Ancients. Its damage output as a build is enough to one-shot uber bosses, so it should clean house quite easily in abattoir for at least the first good few tiers. That being said, if the damage is high enough to one-shot an uber boss, that means that we have more than enough on that side, and with Abattoir of Zero providing higher level and higher difficulty enemies than anywhere else in the game, one of our main goals when crafting a build for this activity specifically is to lean a bit more towards defense than you normally would, as while there is a timer, Hammer of the Ancients won't have any issues with that, so we might as well build ourselves to be a little bit tankier and take away that worry. With that said, we'll talk about our skill points of choice and why we take them, our technique slot decision, our legendaries and unique of choice as well as which uber uniques are worth slotting in if you have them, the affixes that you want to aim for on your more regular gear, our vampiric powers of choice as well, and then our full paragon board setup which is of course heavily lent towards defense, then just any tips that I have on how to play especially with the abattoir in mind. Without further ado then, let's jump into the skill points. For our basic skill we are going to be going with lunging strike as well as enhanced lunging strike and combat lunging strike. Together this simply just gives us a really strong basic skill that has great forward momentum that does bonus damage and heals you when hitting a healthy enemy, and also gives you a short duration berserking when it crits as well. Then for our core skill, we are of course going full on in in Hammer of the Ancients, and it just does so much damage, you want to give it all the possible ranks that you can. We take its enhancements, and of course also Furious Hammer of the Ancients 2 for the bonus damage that scales with how much fury you have when casting. Then we move on to our defensive skill node cluster, and of course we're going to be taking our full suite of different shouts as per usual with a Barbarian build, starting with Rallying Cry, as well as its enhancement and also Tactical Rallying and cry. Altogether, this gives us our resource generating shout, giving us a chunk of resource just on activation. It increases our resource generation by 60%. It makes us unstoppable and thus immune to crowd control. And then it just also gives you a nice movement speed bonus on top of that. After that, we're going to be grabbing challenging shout. This is your damage reduction cooldown, taunting all nearby enemies and giving you significant bonus damage reduction. We also take the enhancement for a bonus to our maximum life while active, as well as tactical challenging shout for bonus fury gain when taking damage. After that, we grab a couple of passives here, three ranks of improvement presence just for a nice good chunk of bonus maximum life, then also three ranks of martial vigor for 12% damage reduction from elite specifically. Then in our next cluster we're going to be grabbing war cry over here, our final shout, we also take its enhancement and power war cry. This shout increases your damage, it grants you berserking, then it also increases your damage even further if there are six or more enemies nearby when you cast it. After that we're just going to be taking a ton of passives in this cluster as well, we're going to be grabbing three ranks of booming voice for an enhanced duration on all three of our different shouts, three ranks of guttural yell as well to reduce the damage of nearby enemies after you shout by a decent chunk even further, then three ranks of aggressive resistance over here, which we also have bonus ranks to from my equipment, and then it's just bonus damage reduction while berserking, which is pretty good, because we are berserking the majority of the time. Then we also just grab three ranks of prolific fury for bonus fury generation while berserking as well, just because fury generation is awesome, and again, we are berserking a good majority of the time. On top of that, we grab three ranks of swiftness here just for a bonus 12% movement speed. Don't underestimate the power of speed when it comes to defense, because avoiding big tax is a big deal, especially in higher tier activities. Then in our next cluster, it will be purely passives, three ranks of pit fighter here for bonus damage to close enemies, as well as bonus damage reduction from distant enemies. Then we also grab one rank of thick skin here, which gives you fortify when you take damage, but this is mostly just as a gateway to get three ranks of defensive stance for bonus damage reduction while fortified, then also one rank of counter offensive for a slight damage boost when fortified for more than 50% of your maximum life. Then we go over and we're going to be picking up our ultimate here, which is Wrath of the Berserker, as well as its enhancements too. This knocks back nearby enemies. It says you to be berserking, as well as making any basic skills reapply berserking for the next 10 seconds. It also makes you unstoppable for the duration, increases your movement speed and fury generation, and for every 50 fury that you spend while it is active, you increase the damage bonus multiplier of berserking itself. After that, we're just going to be grabbing some final passives here, three ranks of wallop for bonus damage with bludgeoning weapons against vulnerable enemies, and then three ranks of brute force as well for a large increased damage multiplier to our overpowers with two-handed bludgeoning weapons 
weapons, which is of course a big part of our general damage. Then we just have our key passive remaining, which is of course going to be Unbridled Rage. It's just way too strong not to use. It just works too well to ignore. The damage bonus is too significant, even if it does cause more resource-based strain. With that covered then, let's talk about our technique slot really quick. We use a two-handed mace for the majority of our important damage, so that bonus will be active when it matters. And so our best use for the technique slot itself is two-handed sword, just so we can apply consistent bleed to enemies and activate some of our other effects as a result of that. On top of which, the actual damage increase from this is pretty solid too. Moving on then, let's talk about our legendaries and uniques here. And as a disclaimer, before we dive through it, I am showing no uber uniques in this build, so that is an accessible version for you to take down the first tiers of Avatar of Azir. But just know that if you have them, Shaco, Melted Heart of Selig, or the Grandfather, you would just absolutely put any of those three in instantly in this build. And the things that you'd be replacing are in the exact same slot, so it's a simple switch over to do so. On top of that, if you also have Doombringer, that is also incredible for this. And in a perfect ideal world, you would honestly have all four of those on at the same time in this exact build. As for the gear that I have equipped here and in the footage then, we have the Banished Lord's Talisman Amulet. This is just unbelievably good for offense for this build. It gives you a guaranteed overpower after you spend 300 fury, and this build spends a ton of fury, so we get that quite often. But even more importantly is the bonus ridiculous 120% damage multiplier to hits that both crit and overpower at the same time. This makes the fact that we have guaranteed overpowers built into the class and to our build in general extremely potent. Not to mention all four affixes on this amulet are really, really, really good for us as well. Then we have the Ring of Red Furrer. It is a pure damage increase ring. It gives you a guaranteed crit on Hammer of the Ancients, essentially every other cast in active combat, and then crit does bonus damage as well. This is a notable damage increase, but because this is an abattoir build specifically, it's worth noting that this will absolutely be worth using on tier one, but quite possibly will be phased out as you go up in higher tiers to make a bit more room for slightly more defensive options or just convenience choices like more resource generation that make your damage more consistently available. That said, it's an incredible ring and we will use it until we're forced to give it up pretty much. Then we also have the Tusk Helm of Yorts the Mighty, the damage increase, fury generation, and cooldown reduction from this effect itself are awesome for us, especially as Berserking is one of our focuses anyways. And as a result of that, it's just all great. Then we have all the affixes on it are great for us too, as the same reason. Then our final unique here is going to be Tybalt's Will, mostly because it comes with bonus max resource, which directly translates to damage for us, on top of its already bonkers effective unique effect itself, which is up to 40% bonus damage as a multiplier while unstoppable and for a few seconds afterwards too. That said, once we reach a tier where we are starting to feel like we need more defense instead of offense, this unique will be the first thing that changes, and you would want to replace it with pants full of ultra defensive affixes and the iron blood aspect specifically over here to give you bonus damage reduction depending on the number of nearby bleeding enemies because everything that we do makes enemies bleed, so this is just very effective. Moving on to our regular legendaries then. On our two-handed mace slot, we of course have Limitless Rage, bonus damage with a core skill for fury generated past the maximum, which we do constantly and purposefully for this. On our two-handed sword, we have the Edge Master's aspect for bonus damage depending on how much resource you have when casting a skill. Then on our one-handed weapons, we have Ancestral Force, which creates the shockwave around Hammer of the Ancients when you use it. The damage bonus from this is nice, but the important part of this is the way that it basically increases the range of the attack, turning it into a circular effect rather than a very small cone. Then we have the Earth Striker aspect for a free guaranteed overpower after you swap weapons eight times. We have Lunging Strike set to use our two-handed sword, and Hammer of the Ancients is of course using the big bonker, so this will just activate naturally through your normal gameplay. For your second ring, you want either Unrelenting Fury for a solid refund on Fury when you kill an enemy or hit a boss with a core skill, and with our resource generation, this actually refunds the majority of the cost more often than not, which is why you can just sort of chain slam as much as you want. Or the second choice is Bold Chieftain. Unrelenting Fury is technically better for damage just because it results in more consistent hammer slams, but Bold Chieftain's cooldown reduction for your shouts gives you more constant uptime on this defensive and utility aspects of those shouts as well as the resource applications too. So it's basically situational between the two and depending on your own stats and how it feels to you. As well, worth mentioning, if you need to cut out the Ring of Red Fur, you would actually just use both of those rings together. Past that, on our gloves, we have the Relentless Berserker aspect for lucky hit chance to extend Berserking with core skill hits, and then on our chest we of course have Disobedience, just for the massive chunk of armor increase that it gives in actual active combat. Then finally on our boots we have the Ghostwalker aspect, just for the ability to walk through enemies when unstoppable and for 4 seconds afterwards, which is incredibly powerful, and then of course also the movement speed bonus that, that provides too. That does it for what the pieces actually are then, but what are the affixes you are aiming for? You absolutely need bonus ranks to Hammer of the Ancients, you want crit chance, overpower damage, damage to close enemies, raw strength, and also aim to have damage while berserking wherever you can actually get it, as that is really important as well. It just does a lot for you. Resource generation on top of that is also massive in this build, as it just lets you slam 
without a tax, and cooldown reduction, really important if you can fit it anywhere. While this build is tanky enough to take a hit from a bone crossbow in a tier 100, the main goal that we have long term is to actually just hit things so hard and so fast they cannot hurt us enough to cause a problem, so these offensive axe fixes are absolutely very important. Also, if you get resource generation specifically, they will help you prepare for a natural swap to the Selig Uber Unique once you get it eventually, and that will actually be really good for you as its ideal situation is to be used with high resource generation too. Then for your defensive stats, you want total armor percentage wherever you can get it, damage reduction from close, damage reduction from distant, damage reduction while fortified, while injured, all of these solid classic effects of note that will have a massive effect on this build. Then for our vampiric powers specifically, we have Hemomancy for a pop of damage once every four seconds based on our maximum life, and this also heals us for a small amount too. Resilience is our big damage reduction power, giving you increased scaling damage reduction depending on how low your life is, at a maximum of 50% bonus damage reduction, which is quite a nice chunk of bonus. Then we have Blood Boil, which gives us another guaranteed overpower every 20 seconds, as well as making overpowers create little globules on the floor that you can walk over and pop for damage. Then we also have a combo piece, Prey on the Weak, for bonus damage to vulnerable enemies, as well as making any vampiric cursed enemy count as vulnerable, then a cursed touch to give you high lucky hit chance to apply vampiric curse, and also increases the damage done by the soul mechanic that's tied to the curse too. With all that covered then, let's dive into our Paragon board setup itself. On the starting board, you want to head up the left side through the defensive rare node to get to the glyph socket, and in this glyph socket, you want to put in the crusher glyph for bonus damage while wielding a mace, and a bonus to our overpower multiplier with mace skills as well. You want to grab the amount of strength that's needed to actually activate the glyph, as well as get the rare nodes in the area, and then go up the right side of the board to get to the exit itself, and here you want to stick on the bone breaker board with the legendary power in the bottom left side. Then you want to actually go directly there, grabbing the rare glyph along the way, and the legendary effect once you have it simply gives you a guaranteed overpower once every 12 seconds. Then back to the start of the board, you want to head up and right through the rare node to go all the way to the glyph socket of the board, and here we're going to be slotting in the martial glyph, which gives you a bonus to nearby magic nodes, as well as a cooldown reduction applied to shouts whenever you use another shout. Get the rare nodes in the radius and just enough strength to activate the glyph, then you want to head out the right side of the board and stick on the carnage board here with the legendary node on the right side. Progress over and down towards the glyph socket itself, and inside of that you want to stick in the ire glyph for more damage while berserking, as well as damage reduction from elites while berserking too, which is pretty nice to have. Then you want to grab just enough of the rare glyphs and also the strength in the area to actually activate the effect, then head down to the cold resistant rare node on the left over here just for a little bonus of your resistances. Then you want to continue down and to the board exit gate, and here you want to stick on the warbringer board with the legendary node and the glyph socket itself also in the top right side. Then you want to head down and left through the rare node to get the legendary node itself, which is a good chunk of bonus fortify whenever you spend a decent chunk of fury. We spend lots of fury, fortify is good for us, so both of this just really lines up well, and it works well for our build as the main source of fortify generation. Then you want to wrap down a little bit over here just to grab the fire resistance rare node too, and then back up to the start of the board and head towards the glyph socket itself, where we're going to be putting in the disembowel glyph for bonus bleed damage, and also a 10% chance when killing a bleeding enemy to reduce non-ultimate cooldowns by one second. This is great for our shouts specifically, and so you want the rare and magic nodes of relevance here, as well as just enough willpower to power through this. However, it's worth noting that this is the glyph here that we will be dropping once we get the tiers of blood glyph from tier one of Abattoir of Zir. Once you have that, we're going to be moving the ire glyph, which we have over here, down into this board. We're going to be taking out the willpower that we've got here and here. We're gonna be moving that over to there. And then now what you're going to have is 40 strength here through all of the four strength here that we'll have in the radius. And then you'll have a bunch of extra points over here that we can stick up in here for our new tiers of blood glyph to give it even more strength like so, which will increase the potency of that glyph even further as a result. This is mostly important because the rare nodes on this board are really good, the damage reduction from close specifically, and then also the damage while berserking, which is a stat that we double dip in, so getting more of it because we put the tears of blood glyph here is really good. But with that covered, let's go back to the Warbringer board, and here you want to exit out of the right side, and you want to attach on the Blood Rage board with the legendary node on the bottom left, then we'll be heading directly towards that legendary node, and here is where we actually get our double dipping from damage with berserking. And this actually gives you a 10% chance when you kill a bleeding enemy to gain berserking for five seconds, but more importantly, gives you just a constant permanent 25% of your damage with Berserking buff as just damage in general. So you double dip in that stat and it gives you a lot of extra damage just in general. After that, you want to go down and around to get to the glyph socket itself for the board in which we're going to be sticking in the Wrath Glyph, which gives you bonus critical strike damage and also gives you a bonus fury whenever you hit an enemy with a critical strike, which is really valuable. You want to grab just enough decks and the rare node within the area just to actually activate the glyph effect. Then we're going back up here to the Carnage board where we're now going to wrap around the right side 
through the damage while berserking rare nodes, which again, very important for us, get to the exit on the right side of the board, and then we're going to be attaching on the decimator board with the legendary node on the right side. After that, you want to head right through the glyph socket here, where we're going to be putting in the undaunted glyph, which gives you bonus damage while you are fortified, as well as bonus damage reduction, depending on how fortified you are as well. On top of that, you want to grab just this one little bonus willpower node up here to actually activate the glyph, otherwise you're just going right through here as a path to get to the legendary node itself, which you're going to activate with your final point, and this gives you 10% increased damage as a multiplier when you make an enemy vulnerable, and a further 10% bonus if you overpower a vulnerable enemy, which again, is something that we constantly do with the build. And that just about does it then as far as actually putting the build together, so how about playing it? Well, it's honestly very simple, but still quite fun. Your shouts are essentially how you engage a big pack of enemies, though you can try to gather the enemies up before launching them off. You want to use Challenging Shout first to activate your damage reduction before anything bad happens to you, then War Cry to activate your damage buffs. Then you want to use Rallying Cry last, as it will instantly just start filling your Fury Gauge, and if you don't start spending it immediately, you're sort of wasting Fury that could be spent on more damage. Wrath of the Berserker is just a classic damage cooldown, ideally used when paired with Shouts on bigger enemies, but on smaller packs you can just use it to bridge the gap between Shout cooldowns as well. Then aside from that, if you have High Fury, use Hammer of the Ancients, otherwise use London Strikes. It's really quite that simple. That's it then. Then, the build that I think that Barbarian has the best shot of tackling Abattoir of Zir with, and honestly, the version of this exact build, if you have the four uber uniques that I mentioned earlier all running at the same time, that's the build I think is most likely to have a chance at reaching tier 25 of the Abattoir out of any class or build in the game currently. So that should give you an idea of just how strong this is as of this point. I hope you've enjoyed this build guide then, and I hope you enjoy the more defensive variation of Hammer of the Ancients that this is if you try it out for yourself as well. Let me know your thoughts on it and let me know how it goes come release of the Abattoir if you use this for yourself too. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye